Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make one of my favorite stuffings for Thanksgiving, Christmas, or the holidays. It's a smoked sausage and apple stuffing. Now there are several steps to this and the first thing we need to do is we have to get these dried cranberries rehydrated. This is six ounces of dried cranberries, craisins, whatever you want to call them, there's different brands. Really all you need are six ounces of some sort of dried cranberry. To this I'm going to add a quart of really hot water. It was just boiled so it's really hot. And if you want to go ahead and spill some on the cutting board or wherever you happen to have the bowl, that just adds character to the dish. So we're gonna set these aside for about 15 minutes while we move on to preparing the rest of the ingredients. All right, I have six stalks of celery and the first thing we're gonna do is split these lengthwise. Once we have these split, we're just gonna chop them up. All right, so we have our six stalks of celery chopped up here, and now we're gonna move on to some leeks. So here I've got three medium leeks, just the light and the pale part. We're not gonna go and take the whole dark green leafy part of it. First thing I wanna do is break this down by splitting it down the middle, put it side by side, chop it up. Now, if you don't like leeks, you could use onions in this, no problem. It would probably be about a good sized onion chopped up. This is what we're looking for for our leeks, just a nice chop on them. And now let's move on to our apples. So we have three Granny Smith apples here and we're just going to break these down. We're gonna core them first. If you have a certain way you core apples, go for it. I'm just going to use the knife and basically cut the core out. Just cutting right around the core here. So we end up with a core, four pieces of apple that we're gonna chop up. All right, I'm gonna finish breaking down these apples and we're gonna head over to the stove and start cooking up our sausage. I've got my pan over medium heat and I'm gonna be cooking up a pound of an all natural sage sausage. It's kind of like a breakfast sausage. And we want to fully cook this sausage because when we take it out to the Weber kettle to smoke it in a cast iron pan, it needs to be fully cooked. It's not really gonna cook out there. It's gonna bake. Sausage is looking good here. Now while this is finishing up cooking, let me show you the bread we're gonna be working with for our stuffing. So what we have here is the equivalent of one loaf of bread, but it's two different kinds of bread. You can probably see in there a light bread and a dark bread. We cubed these pieces of bread up last night, put them in the oven at 200 degrees for about 30 minutes, and then we let them set out and cool on a tray for several hours before we then put them in a bag that was open overnight so they're nice and dried out and ready to be turned into stuffing. Now we're getting close here, and you can see that this sausage doesn't have too much grease coming out of it. There's a little, but you want that. If you had too much grease, you might want to drain off some of it, but we're going to be dumping this with all these good juices right into that bread mixture in the bowl. All right, we are done. Let's get this into our bread mixture. We're not gonna mix that up yet. We're just gonna let those juices from the sausage drain down into the bread. Okay, we're gonna add four tablespoons of butter to our pan here, still on medium heat. We're gonna let that melt. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and add my leeks now. These are gonna go for probably about three minutes before we add our celery. But we're gonna go ahead and add our celery now. Now when everything is just starting to get soft, we're gonna add four more tablespoons of butter. And we're also gonna add our seasoning. We've got a teaspoon each of salt and pepper, a tablespoon of poultry seasoning, a tablespoon of thyme, and a tablespoon of sage. We're gonna stir these in here. We wanna let that butter we just added melt down completely before we add our apples. All right, we are going to add our apples now. 
We want to let these go for about four minutes until the apples start to soften. These are looking good. They're softening nicely. They don't have to be mushy, but you want them soft, the apples. All right, let's go ahead, turn this off, and get this into our stuffing mixture. So here goes our mixture. We're also gonna add our rehydrated cranberries now. We're gonna mix this up before we add some moisture. We're gonna be using some chicken stock today. We have about three cups ready, may not need it all. That nice red color in here from those cranberries with all the other stuff that's green. Now I'm gonna be doing this in a cast iron pan out on the Weber kettle indirect, but if you wanted to do this in the oven, you could just put it in a baking dish, bake for 30 minutes covered at 350, and then for about 10 minutes uncovered at 350. All right, so I'm gonna add probably about a cup to start with here. We don't want it mushy, but we don't want it dry. I'm gonna add a little bit more here. If you can still feel some crunch or some hardness in the bread pieces, you need a little more moisture. So we've added about two cups of our chicken stock to this now. You could use vegetable stock, turkey stock. And I can tell it still needs a little bit more moisture. Add about a half cup more here. So we've added about two and a half cups. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and add the remainder of our liquid. And this is why you add it a little bit at a time. You don't wanna oversaturate it at first. You can always add more. It's really hard to take liquid out. I'm gonna take a little taste now, see if we need to add any salt or pepper. I don't think we need to add anything right now. I think we need to get it in the cast iron pan and get it out to the Weber kettle. So I've got my 12 inch cast iron skillet here and I'm just gonna take some butter, rub it around the inside to grease it up a bit. Because when you can add butter, why not add butter? Now we just add the stuffing. If you end up with more than your pan or baking dish will hold, make another one, make a little one. I wanna compact this a little bit, but I don't wanna press it way down. And I think I can just dump the rest in here. It doesn't matter if it's coming up over the edge here higher than the edges. It's gonna press it down gently, not forcing it and compacting it. You just want it to fill all the spaces. Now, normally what you would do is you would foil this first, especially if you're doing it in the oven. But because we wanna get some smoke flavor out there, we're gonna do this unfoiled for about 20 minutes and then we'll cover it for about another 20 minutes. And then if we need to at the end, maybe we'll take it off for another 10 minutes to crisp up a little more. So let's get this out to the Weber kettle. Okay, our Weber kettle's running at about 350 degrees, which is on the lid temperature. I'm not using any sort of temperature probe at the grate here. We don't need to be that exact with this. Now I have it set up with one briquette basket, and as soon as I get the cast iron pan on there, I'm gonna add a piece of post oak to the briquettes to get some nice post oak smoke in here. All right, we're gonna put our pan right here, and in about 10 minutes, we'll rotate it. And if the light looks weird, it's because we're using artificial light because we're night grilling. We're gonna get a piece of post oak right here. We're gonna let our piece of wood catch. As soon as it catches, we'll get the lid on and start smoking. All right, our post oak is going. Let's get our lid on and get this smoking. In about 10 minutes, we'll rotate it. Got really nice smoke coming out. I just love the smell of this post oak. All right, that's 10 minutes. Let's rotate this cast iron pan. Remember when you're working with cast iron, good gloves. That is looking and smelling really good. All right, let's get the lid back on. Keep smoking, another 10 minutes. All right, our 10 minutes are past. Let's get some foil on this. Oh, that is looking nice. We're not really going to get any more smoke flavor here, so the wood burning doesn't matter. But if we decide at the end we want to take the foil off and give it a little more smoke, that'll still be there. Get our lid back on, and in about 10 minutes we're going to check it for temperature. All right, so it's been 10 minutes. 
want to check the temperature now and see how we're doing because I think I'm going to take the foil off. I'm really looking for a temperature that's at least 140, 145 in this stuffing. It's already cooked, so we don't need to cook anything, but we want it warm. And I'm just going to go in the middle and just see how we're doing. It's about 123 degrees. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the foil off right now for another 10 minutes, let it crisp up even a little more, and then I think we'll be pretty close to done. Get the lid on and let this finish up. All right, that is another 10 minutes. Let's give it a check. All right, let's see if we are close to our target of 140 or 145. We were at 122 when we checked 10 minutes ago. Let's see, we're actually man, 131. So we have a little bit to go. I want to get it up to about 140 just so it's, you know, hot food. Yeah, so I'm going to give it another, another 10 minutes. But I'm going to put the foil back on now because I don't want the top to dry out. I want it a little bit crispy, but not dried out. 10 more minutes and we should be done. All right, another 10 minutes has gone by. That's a total of 50 minutes now. So normally this would bake for somewhere around 45 minutes total. So it's pretty close to what you would do in the oven if you did this in the oven instead of out here on the kettle. Oh yeah, <laughs> 143, 145. I don't know if you can see that upside down here. It's important to get it to a safe temperature if your ingredients haven't been cooked like this. Ours are all cooked, but if you're having any raw ingredients in a stuffing, you gotta take it to the safe temperature for that ingredient. I'm gonna get this inside, and we're gonna have a taste. So here is our smoked sausage and apple stuffing. I don't know if you can tell from the camera, but it looks gorgeous. There's a great golden brown color on top and those pops of red from those rehydrated cranberries just look amazing. And it smells really, really good right now. And that means it's time to taste. Now I'm gonna be tasting this straight out of the cast iron pan, which means I gotta have a glove on because I know I'm gonna grab it and it's just gonna burn the heck out of my hand. <laughs> so here we go. Got a little bit of everything in this bite. Some of the bread, some of the craisins, some of the sausage, the leeks. There we go. Mmm. Oh, that's really good. I just love those fall seasonings, you know, Thanksgiving seasonings, the sage, the thyme, that poultry seasoning goes so well with this. And if you've never used apple in a stuffing you make, give it a try. It goes so well with just about any kind of stuffing, especially something that already has a savory component like this sausage. Mm. And as I mentioned before, you don't have to do this out on the grill. You don't have to do it in a cast iron pan. You don't even have to smoke it. Do it in the oven a normal way, in a baking dish, 350 for 45 minutes, cover it at the beginning, give it about 15 minutes at the end, uncovered. But if you do have a barbecue, you do have a cast iron pan, and you do have a way to make some smoke, giving it that smoke there adds such an amazing layer of flavor on the top as you get into it. Smoke loves moisture and that moist top, when we put it in there, just absorbed that post oak smoke. Mm. This is perfect for Thanksgiving, for Christmas, for Arbor Day, for any weekend in the summer. If you like stuffing, this is something you have to try. Mm.